The following podcast is a deep, shallow dive production. And you're going to love it. Okay, let's go. Cheney thing. Do, do we really have to do that? Uh, look, I, it goes broader than that. Look, Bernie Sanders. Dick Cheney, Taylor Swift. No, 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 and I do this, I believe this, yeah. there is still a core group of folks out there, you know, your point being, and not joke, the, the, the don't tread on me, the Reagan piece of this, the, the libertarian piece, uh, but the constitutional piece, yes. there are a lot of people out there. I think, I think Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney give permission to those folks who want to find a reason to do the right thing. It doesn't mean they agree with us. We're not going to take their foreign policy decisions and discussions, you know, and implement those. We're going to take pro- their... Uh, pro- their promise? Some- yes, promise. <laughs> promise. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. All right. You know what? I played that because it's good to see that Jon Stewart and I are on the same page. By the way, I can't say I agree with everything Jon Stewart says. I actually think he has Trump derangement syndrome and just can't see any good whatsoever in Trump. But other than that, man, he is a sharp guy. He really is. He is very sharp. He's definitely... One of those people that I think has a, has an excellent bead on pretty much everything, except Trump. I just think he's like irrational about Trump. And again, you guys know I'm not all in on Trump by any stretch of the imagination, but for some reason, I don't think Jon Stewart sees that clearly. But he definitely sees the fact that Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney are horrible, clearly. So that was him. He had Tim Walls on. And I thought that was fun that he kind of was like, seriously, Dick Cheney, that's ridiculous. And it really is. I'm telling you, it really is. I I don't see any justification for that. I mean, Dick Cheney to me is someone as awful as Benjamin Netanyahu. Like these guys are evil. These guys are evil human beings. All right. So a little play off of that. Oh, by the way, yeah, I I thought that was hilarious. Tim Walls is like, oh yeah, Dick Cheney, Taylor Swift, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, we're a big tent. We're including them all. I mean, you can't, I'm no, I'm no Swifty, but Taylor Swift does not deserve to be in the same sentence as Dick Cheney. Neither does Bernie Sanders. And I think Bernie Sanders is a little bit of a coward these days. I really do. And I will be delivering the Bernie's Blackout episode. All right. So speaking of invading countries, I think I've played this guy for you. I think I've played this guy for you. Oh yeah, I did say that correctly. I think I've played (laughs) this guy for you before. And this is a guy named John Perkins and he's known as the economic hitman. But I wanted to play this again because hopefully, you know, hopefully after all these different episodes are you know, our knowledge base with how this geopolitical stuff works, I hope is increasing. I mean, my personal knowledge base is definitely increasing. Things that, you know, maybe even I covered way back when, they make a lot more sense to me now. They really do. And and this is one of them. So listen to John Perkins, the economic hitman, basically talking about how the United States government and probably namely the CIA creates regime change in these countries. And so a perfect example for you to have in your mind would be, he cites a couple, but maybe a better example would be, you know, think about Iraq and Saddam Hussein as he's talking through this. We work many different ways, but perhaps the most common is that we will identify a third world country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sisters. However, the money never goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our own corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, highways, industrial parks, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, as well as our own corporations, but do not help the majority of the people at all. And yet they, the whole country, is left holding a huge debt. And it's such a huge debt they can't possibly repay it. 
So at some point, the economic hitmen go back and say, you owe us a lot of money, you can't repay your debts, so give us a pound of flesh. When I failed to bring them around, to get them to accept these loans, to get them to put their countries into servitude, then I knew that standing right behind me were what we call the jackals. And these are people who overthrow governments or assassinate their leaders. And both Jaime Roldos of Ecuador and Omar Torrijos of Panama were assassinated by CIA-sponsored jackals because I failed to corrupt them. And Saddam Hussein was probably assassinated by jackals because he wasn't able to be corrupted. So anyway, I wanted to play that because I came across it on Instagram and I posted it on the Deep Shallow Dive page and it got a lot of reaction. And so, you know, again, I think that stuff is really makes a lot more sense now. It really does. It makes a lot more sense now. And by the way, you know, I did get a lot of questions from various people in regards to, I guess, more clarity around what I think this situation with Hamas and, you know, like now this Yaya Sinwar guy's dead and all that. And one of my friends brought up a really interesting point. He's like, because he and I have talked before about, he doesn't want me to mention his name. I love how some people... Actually, I I totally respect that. Whenever we talk, he's like, you can't say, you can't say my name. You can talk about our conversation, but you can't say my name. I actually respect that. All right. So him and I have talked a lot about this and he definitely was like skeptical when I said, Hey, I mean, what if Hamas is fake? What if all this stuff is like by design and the, they created Hamas in order to have an enemy, in order to have a boogeyman, in order to be able to get $3 billion every year from the U.S. taxpayer, in order to get $27 billion, which we've sent to Israel recently, this year, actually. And, and fundamentally, also just, what if it's just a way to create chaos? So I don't know if I've convinced him of that, and obviously I'm not trying to convince him of it, but he's definitely come around because the other day, the one thing he said to me, which I thought was incredibly interesting, was he said that, he's like, you know, have you ever noticed that when you see all these images of like, you know, the Iron Dome, that big Israeli defense system, like in the sky and they'll show all these images and it looks like just like bottle rockets, you know, they never show, you know, they never show any building in Israel being demolished. Whereas obviously in Gaza and now in Southern Lebanon, man, you're seeing like buildings free falling because they get hit by, you know, an Israeli missile. And obviously you see the tremendous destruction in Gaza and now Southern Lebanon, but it's like when, when Hamas or Hezbollah, you know, you'll hear these reports and it'll say like Hezbollah fired 800 rockets into Israel, but literally, and this is him talking, he's like, we never see any damage. There's never any damage to any building or anything. He's like, all you see in the pictures are, you know, in the sky, it looks like, you know, bottle rockets basically. And I was like, you know, that isn't actually very true. That's a good point. I can't say, I can't say outside of October 7 and, you know, There's been a lot of stuff debunked on that, but outside of any footage of anything on October 7th, you really haven't seen any destruction inside Israel. Even, even when Iran fired off all those rockets. Now, supposedly when that happened, they were absolutely surgical about it. And it looks like they did end up taking out a bunch of, I don't know, F-13 or F-35 Israeli jet fighters. They actually took out a bunch, but even that you didn't see much on the news. I think that's for a whole different reason. They didn't want to show that those things had gotten taken out. But aside from that, when you see the quote unquote Iron Dome stuff, he's like, 
it's pretty interesting. All you see is like an image of the sky and it looks like, you know, bottle rockets exploding in the air. I was like, you know what, homie? That is a very observant observation. And I will keep my eye out for more stuff along those lines. So anyway, that's that. All right. You know what? Speaking of Benjamin Netanyahu, I did want to play this clip because I want to show you just propaganda at its finest. Prime Minister, how is it going? Well, two days ago, we took out Yechia Sinwar, the terrorist mastermind whose goons beheaded our men, raped our women, burnt babies alive. We took him out and we're continuing our battle with Iran's other terrorist proxies. We're going to win this war. So will something deter you? No. So that's Netanyahu basically just repeating the lies that he's been repeating for a year. There were no babies beheaded. There were no, there are actually no women raped, believe it or not. All of that stuff from the CNN reporters themselves down to everybody else, if you are paying attention, has all been completely debunked. But What's crazy is he goes on, he goes on this, whatever interview, actually, that was like somebody recording him walking on the grass. And again, I mean, I guess it's not a surprise, but anyway, all right, that's that. Let's move on to the next clip. So this is again, that comedian, Dave Smith. I really like this guy. I think he's definitely nuanced. And I think I've said before, he's a libertarian. I need to kind of understand what those guys are all about a little bit better. But I really like him. I think he makes a lot of sense and a lot of common sense. So give this a listen. How many times the word racism was mentioned? And around 2012, it shoots up. Yep. Social justice shoots up. Transgenderism shoots up. White privilege shoots up. This was forced on the American people. Why are we having these conversations now? No, the people did not wake up one day and decide we want to have a national conversation about chicks with dicks. That didn't happen. This wasn't an organic movement. It was all of the most powerful people decided this is what we're going to talk about. And why was that? Look, when you're failing on policy, you pick it to a culture war. Yep. You pit people against yep. each other, so they're fighting each other. Yep. We had in this country, we had an Occupy Wall Street movement where leftists were standing outside of big banks screaming, we are the 99%. Right-wingers had a populist movement called the Tea Party, where yep. they were outraged about the bailouts of big banks, yep. unsustainable debt, government spending. They don't like that. That's not what the powers that be like. Look, they like you fighting about issues like abortion. Now, I'm not saying abortion isn't a very important issue. It's a very important issue. But the, us fighting about that issue doesn't scare anyone at the Federal Reserve. It doesn't scare anyone in the CIA. They don't care if you fight about that issue. They love you fighting over transgender bathrooms. Yep. Man, I loved that. And my favorite part was when he said, when you fail in policy, you create a culture war. So seriously, think about that. Think back to 2012. And that was really the beginning of Obama's second term. So I don't know. I guess maybe that's a little strategic in thinking Obama's only got four more years, so maybe we need to, I don't know. All right. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't stretch that, but I will say, I think he's right. I mean, think about these culture wars that have been created. You know, we never had this stuff before. We really didn't. We did not have this stuff. And honestly, I don't remember well, I really don't remember well enough from 2012 to 2016 to, to think back and, and remember if, if we had all this chaos, obviously with, with Trump's winning the election in 2016, the chaos started. I don't really remember what life was like 2012 to 2016. Oh my God. That's sad. I can't remember those years. God, I can't remember a lot of years. I'm not even going to lie. It's like you wake up one day and you're like, where the hell did the last 20 years go? I'm not even kidding. I don't know if you guys feel like that, but man, I definitely feel like that lately. I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going through a little bit of a midlife crisis. Maybe I am. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway. All right. So I liked that from Dave Smith. I hope you enjoyed that clip. Here's another one. So this is another comedian, Tim Dillon. Man, these comedians, man, they they really are smart. and. Maybe, maybe it's something to do with the fast twitch muscles in their brains or something. 
because they can think so quickly on their feet. But a lot of these comedians have really come into their own politically. I mean, I, I, I truly enjoy him. I mean, I guess John Stewart's another one of them, you know, I guess he'd be considered a comedian. Joe Rogan's considered a comedian, Dave Chappelle, Dave Smith. Now Tim Dillon. It's almost to a point now where it's almost full game of Thrones where everyone has an agenda and everybody's out for themselves. So let's take a listen here to the appropriately creepy Halloween meeting between Joe Biden and Barack Obama, and let's try to figure out what they're saying, if anything. It's bad. Yeah, it's terrible. Obama says, it's over. It's done. She's done. Biden goes, he's staring. Obama's going, it's they, they, she doesn't have it. She doesn't have it. Biden goes, can we shoot her? <laughs> you know, if we shot her, like I know they didn't shoot him, but we could shoot her potentially. And Obama goes, I don't think that's going to make a lot of sense. He goes, we've thought about that. I have thought about that. You know, Michelle brought that up the other night. Well, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, Biden says. I mean, you know, and he goes, but listen, here's the reality. Then who comes in? So now they're just looking at Clinton to make sure he didn't hear that because they don't trust him. And he goes, isn't that beautiful? He points to the organ. He goes, the organ's beautiful. But that's really what it is, folks. All right. So basically, that was at Ethel Kennedy's funeral. And there is a there is a scene that has gotten clipped all over the Internet where it's Biden and Obama talking. And I guess they they brought in like professional lip readers. I'm not even kidding. Like this thing is like all over the Internet and it's all over Instagram and TikTok. But they brought in somebody brought in professional lip readers and they were trying to read Obama and Biden's lips. And it did look like I'm being serious. Actually, it did look like they were talking about Kamala and talking about how she wasn't doing a good job. Now there's a lot of, there's a lot of funny AI memes and AI stuff. And maybe I'll play one at that, at the end that have been created about it. But in all seriousness, supposedly, from the lip reader's perspective, that was what the discussion was about. It was Obama and Biden talking about, you know, being disappointed in Kamala's performance. Now, again, who knows? All right, this next clip is Nicole Shanahan. She was RFK Jr.'s running mate, and she is on Jesse Waters. This was from a few weeks ago. But, you know, this was, I'm playing this because this is a topic that, like, in my mind, it's like both parties right now should be advocating for making America healthy again. Like, I kind of, I mean, I love that RFK Jr. and Casey and Callie Means and now Nicole Shanahan and Trump and all that. Like, I love that they're talking about it. But unfortunately, because it's only them, it's going to get it's going to get thought of or branded as a right wing thing and it's it's health it's the health of the country and so i want to point out how incredibly dysfunctional this country is right now that they can't even come together on this like how awesome would it be if kamala and tim walls were like you know and We've seen the Make America Healthy Again, and, you know, we agree with that. We agree with making America healthy again. We should make America healthy again. But obviously, they don't talk anything about that concept because it's not theirs. You know what I mean? Now, again, I mean, I get it. No, I don't get it, actually. I don't get it. I was going to say I get it. They can't advocate. They can't say that Team Trump is doing something good. But you know what? They can actually, especially when it concerns the health of children, the obesity of children, the health of even the health of adults, the obesity of adults, you know, when it, when it does, they could, they can come together on that. They could say, Hey, you know, we'll actually, we'll actually agree to making America healthy again as well. You know, come up with your own acronym if you want, but that's something that shows me just how unfortunate of a place we are that you can't even have consensus or 
agree that your opposition is doing something right. And I'll tell you, it wasn't like this back in the day. Like if you go back and watch debates between, for example, JFK versus Nixon, or even even Obama versus uh, what's his name? Uh, oh my God! What? Why am I blanking on this guy? Mitt Romney. God, I can't believe I blanked on that. Even Obama versus Mitt Romney, John McCain versus Obama, like all of these previous debates, Reagan versus Carter. No, did Reagan debate Carter? No, I don't think Reagan came after Carter. All of them, you know, they had a level of decorum to them. They really did. They had a level of decorum to them. All right, so listen to this. You had last week a big event in Arizona, and your running mate got on stage and he says, we're going to make America healthy again. Tell us what that means. Mm -hmm. So making America healthy again is admitting the fact that we have the highest chronic health cr disease rate of any modern nation. We spend $4.6 trillion on health care. It doesn't seem to be getting us anywhere. So it's really asking the hard questions of why is our health care system not delivering healthy people? Um, we know that there's a huge amount of collusion and a huge amount of corruption in our agencies. We're going to decouple that. We're going to decouple big pharma from our government agencies that are responsible for delivering delivering healthy results to people. We're going to stop censoring scientists that are telling us the causes of these diseases. We're not going to just whack a mole with these diseases anymore. We're going to get to the root causes of them. And we're going to be honest with people and we're going to help them guide themselves into health. We're going to fix our food supply chain once and for all. We're going to fix dirty water once and for all. You know, Robert F. Kennedy cleaned up the Hudson. He's cleaned up a whole river system. And there are many other systems in this country that we know that if we had an opportunity to, we could clean out all the PFAS and toxins that we know are making us sick. And we're going to see those health results turn around in a matter of, I think we could do it in six months. Mm, we're going to see a decline in autism. I mean, seriously, like, why is that controversial? Why is any of that controversial? That should be something that, that our collective government the Senate and the House and the presidency and the challenging team, like everybody should be coming together on that. I mean, I know that's probably naive to say it like that, but man, it really, it really is unfortunate. All right. We're at 22 minutes. I was going to play a few more clips, but I will not do that. And I will play a funny meme clip along the lines of, my newfound, my newfound way of ending this podcast by playing either a funny clip or a musical clip or something. So anyway, this is one of the, one of the funny ones that the AI generated ones that got made for, from that conversation at Ethel Kennedy's funeral between Obama and Biden. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger on this. It's just funny. And that's it. All right, call a spade a spade. So is Kamala doing okay? Nope. She's down, Joe. I, uh, I think they found out that she's retarded, and now we're basically fucked. Trump is killing us at the polls, so yes, we're going to lose Joe. Damn it. Wait, wait. What if I come back to run again? As candidate? Yeah. Well, uh... Let me put it this way, Joe. The only person in this world who is even more retarded than Kamala Harris is basically you. So no, Come Joe, on, man. you're just not going back yet. Shot. Let's let it all play out. Okay, let's just, we'll talk later, Joe. Okay. Women looking fine up in here. I just caught that they added Bill Clinton at the end. Women looking fine up in here. That was a great way to end it. This episode was brought to you by the new book, Deep Shallow Dive Into You, available now on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hardcover and paperback. Don't forget to sign up for our new mailing list on our website at deepshallowdive.com.